traditional R&B of the 20th century has changed. Contemporary R&B artists rarely confine their music to one specific sound. Rather, they intermix aspects from other genres, such as alternative, pop, and even trap. Tinashe is a blur of musical genres. Throughout her career, she's ridden the line of pop star and R&B star, never fully conforming to one. Contrary to popular belief, Tinashe is an insightful artist with multiple talents and an impressive grind. However, her stagnant career overshadows her success and raises questions on why she never became a major superstar. Let's get into it. Tinashe was born on February 6, 1993 in Lexington, Kentucky. Her name comes from the Shona language meaning peace with God. Ever since she was a young girl, Tinashe had a talent and passion for performing that she states was nourished and encouraged by her family. Tinashe started her career as a childhood actress, starring in small roles such as Polar Express and Two and a Half Men. At the age of 17, Tinashe put her acting career on hiatus to pursue her passion of singing. She was approached to be the lead singer of a girl group called The Stunners. The group signed to Universal Records, finding some success before eventually splitting up to pursue solo endeavors. Following the split, Tinashe was an unsigned artist, but was determined to take her career to the next level. She self-purchased tons of equipment, built an at-home studio, and started writing and producing her own music. Her debut mixtape, titled In Case We Die, was released on February of 2012. The mixtape was received well for its dark alternative R&B production, as well as introspective lyricism. Many people compared her sound to that of The Weeknd and the late Aaliyah. Tinashe would still be an independent artist when record labels would fight at the chance to sign her. She was hesitant on signing with a major record label, fearing they would mold her into someone she wasn't. But she also understood the resources a label could provide to foster her career to the next level. Feeling they best understood her musical direction, she signed with RCA Records in 2012. In hindsight, many people believe this was the day her career took a turn for the worse. Following her signing with RCA Records, she started to work on her debut album. She independently released two more mixtapes titled Reverie and Blackwater, both of which were produced in her bedroom and continued to show her growth as an alternative R&B star. It wasn't until Tinashe released her highly anticipated album titled Aquarius that her music would be played on mainstream radio. Lead singles like Two On and All Hands On Deck brought upon immediate success. The rest of the album was praised for its hazy production and sultry vocals. It was the world's introduction to Tinashe's sound and for all intents and purposes, made her a promising star. But perhaps it was after her album, her relationship with her record label was start to strain. RCA Records turned their back to Tinashe after battling with her over the sound of her second album. Her refusal to conform would result in her second album being pushed back many years. While battling with record label execs, Tinashe released her final mixtape titled Amethyst, a thank you to her OG fans for sticking with her. The mixtape was critically acclaimed, and Complex even put it on their list for 15 mixtapes that should have won Grammys. But Tinashe would take her biggest hurdle when she released a string of unsuccessful singles back to back. It seemed that in the first album, Tinashe was able to effortlessly ride the lines of R&B and pop. However, these songs made Tinashe look like she was struggling to find an identity. To the general public, it looked like Tinashe lost potential. Only seeing snippets of Tinashe's frustration with her label, people rallied behind the idea that Tinashe was unsuccessful due to her artistry. With no help from her label, Tinashe released a second album digitally titled Nitride. Although it was a strong album, due to the creative differences with her record label, Nitride received no promotion, virtually going under everyone's radar. After two years, Tinashe finally released an official sophomore studio album titled Joyride. The album was not her best, and it was clear she was battling for a coherent sound. The record label's cookie cutter formula for a commercially successful album was mainly at fault for the major failure of Joyride. It failed to go gold in any country, making people question whether this would be the last time we heard of Tinashe. Feeling her creative control was constantly being challenged, 
Tinashe initiated the conversation to be let go from her contract. In early 2019, it was announced that she was released from RCA Records, a day of relief for her and her fans, especially for those who have been riding with her from the beginning. She's gone exactly back to where she started, an unsigned artist hungry for success, her music untouched by men in black suits. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys with the next one real soon. Bye-bye.